One common comment or even complaint heard about experiments done with farmers is that the results can be noisy or variable. In this video I introduce the idea of turning some of that noise into useful information. These sorts of comments are commonly heard about on-farm trials and are used as an argument against using them, at least against using them for research rather than only as part of extension. It is true that results from trials involving many farmers do tend to be variable, with treatment effects apparently different on different farms. It's also true that if you use conventional methods of analysis and interpretation that focus on the average differences between treatments across the whole experiment, and whether they are significantly different from zero, then the results can be disappointing. But I hope to show you how an alternative view of the data can actually give more useful results than a simple look at means and make use of this variation. Some of the noise or unexplained variation is turned into information. I will also briefly explain the implications for designing better experiments with farmers. The piece of advice in the last comment here, to reduce variation by focusing on a few farms and replicating well on each, turns out to be precisely the wrong solution. Look at this simple example of data from a trial. It's far too small for a real experiment from which you could draw conclusions, but it illustrates the idea. There are four treatments or options compared on four farms and crop yield was measured. Farm 3 didn't test option A, but that doesn't matter. If you do a standard analysis of variance, assuming farms are blocks, you find there is no evidence of a difference in treatment means. The p-value for the test is large. And the CV, the coefficient of variation, which is the residual standard deviation as a percentage of the mean, is huge at 83%. But you don't need these statistics to see the problem. Just look at the data. There is no consistency in the differences between yields of each treatment across farms. For example, treatment A does well on farm 4, but poorly on farms 1 and 2. Consistency of treatment effect is what is measured by the F-test for treatments, and here there is no consistency. The overall means are not very different from each other. The standard analysis would stop there, and the researcher would go and do something different. However, let me now tell you something else about these farms. Farms 1 and 2 have sandy soil, while farms 3 and 4 have clay soil. Now there is some consistency in treatment effects. On the sandy soil, treatments B and C do well, whereas on the clay soil, it's A and D that are the best performance. There is a treatment by soil type interaction. It shows up as a highly significant p-value if you do the test, and when you allow for the interaction, the residual CV drops to 28%. So rather than simply having a lot of noise or unexplained variation in the data, we have a refined or rich result that shows how the treatments behave on different soil types. That's the sort of nuanced information that farmers need. It's far more relevant to them than overall averages. I'm not going to explain how to do the analysis here, I want to look at the design implications for this idea of moving from noise to information. Here's a real example of the effects of different soil fertility treatments on maize yield on 31 farms. I've colour-coded the yields with green low and red high to help show the patterns. First column gives the control treatment, that is farmer's current methods. They are nearly all low yields. The other columns show the effect of six different systems, and the results are very variable. Sorting the rows of the table makes it clearer. There are a group of farms that show good response to the inputs. Another group shows mixed response. And a third group are generally unresponsive to any of the soil fertility strategies. What's going on? Discussion with the scientists suggested that differential responses might be due to differing levels of initial soil organic carbon. 
Further, discussion with farmers suggested it could be due to the quality of plot management. More generally, ideas for the explanation of such differential effects can come from local and scientific knowledge, from careful observation of the field plots during the experiment, and from further data analysis. Data analysis will confirm if these are indeed the explanations, but that data analysis requires two things. It requires you to have the appropriate data, and have an experimental arrangement that will allow you to anal analyse the data. So we need to think about how the study is planned and designed. If we have the hypothesis, or guess, that the effect of treatments depends on the two factors of soil, organic carbon, and quality of management, and both of these vary between farms, then the table of means we need to present the results is this one. And among farms in the same row of the table, we should then have good consistency of effects. If you measured these two quantities, soil organic carbon and quality of measurement, you could do the analysis and find out. Hence part of the design should be planning to measure the soil organic carbon and the quality of management. But you might be unlucky and find that you have very few farms in one or more rows of the table. Hence, if you had these hypotheses before you started the trial, or you're planning a follow-up experiment, then the ideal way your total of about 32 farms would fall in the table is like this, with equal numbers of farms of each type in each row. Soil organic carbon is something that only changes slowly, so you could determine it before the start of the experiment and make sure you had enough farms of each type. The quality of plot management might be something that you don't know before the start, so maybe the best you can do at the design stage is this, and hope that you get a reasonable number of farms in each management group. And of course, you must design measurement so that at the end of the season you do know which management group each farm or plot falls into. A possible constraint to using this design idea is that the interaction with farmers is a participatory process. Farmers are not usually recruited or sampled to take part in trials. They're typically members of farmers' groups, and they take part in the trial as part of group activity. What if such farmers don't include those with low soil organic carbon? This wouldn't be surprising. Most farmers' groups do not represent a random cross-section of local, social or ecological conditions. But you do have some options to try and increase the representativity of people and fields included in the trial, with the aim of getting a good number of farms of types needed to get the desired results. Discuss the requirement with farmers, find out where they fall in the categories needed, and then try to group farms or f type fields of types that are underrepresented. If, in the end, it's not possible to find, for example, enough low soil organic carbon fields, then you must accept that your results will be limited. The main point is to plan and understand the heterogeneity of farms and farmers that are included, rather than just leave it to chance. <laughs>